Yo, it's Perp, back with another video, and I'm gonna try this to do this once again, because I literally just deleted, like, my whole entire video, so I gotta start over again. Really frustrating, but whatever. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter, at PerpMinor420. So, there's a lot going on in this episode, dealing with Jukebox, and just the repercussions of what happened to Nicole. We definitely see that with jukebox trying to pay her respects and her parents not really wanting her there and it, they go to a really dark uh, like jukebox goes to a really dark place i should say in this episode and i'm curious to see where this goes on the other side of things you have you know detective howard and burke trying to crack down on why are these bodies falling you know they get some type of lead to the guy from Queensbridge while this is going on, uh, rock helps Julianne with her, uh, revenge on her husband, gets rid of her husband. She's a really weird character still. I don't know, but moving on rock sits down with Marvin and Lulu to try to get the grasp of what's going on in the streets. Like what's the moves we'll be going to do. You know, even Rock questions uh, Lulu's whole meetup with uh, Unique. And you uh, and Lulu's kind of like, why would you question that? You know I'm loyal to you. But I'm wondering how this is all going to play out. Because Unique is ready for war. He's going to strike first. He wants to strike first, I should say. While they're figuring all that out, you have Detective Howard and Burke trying to crack down. They ask around and... They get a lead to this guy in Queensbridge, you know, the guy that really didn't like Kanan from the jump, didn't want to take any orders from, but took orders from anyways. Um, he pretty much folds like a napkin, tells him exactly who, you know, made this product. It was Kanan. So that puts a target on Kanan's back. And I feel like Burke is going to kind of put two and two together with Howard and kind of you know, throw him under the bus because she likes to play by the rules. He doesn't. While this, all this madness and chaos is going on, you know, it's, it's a lot to deal with. Uh, Marvin is kind of stressed out because he doesn't want Rock to find out. While this is all going on as well, Jukebox is kind of going through it. Even goes as far as breaking into Nicole's house just to watch the tape of them singing. That was really depressing. We'll get back to that shortly. Lulu's starting to make some really big business moves. Pretty much uh, bullies Crown into taking half of ownership of his label. I'm curious to see how that's all going to play out, considering how this episode ended. But we'll get into all that. Let me know how you guys feel about this in the comments below if you've seen it. Howard is able to track down Rock by pulling her over, saying, like, if you don't follow me and come with me, I'm going to go lock up Kanan. So this is where we get a lot of information about DEFCON. DEFCON supposedly was left-handed. <laughs> I like how Rock really worded that and was kind of using Rock as a front. We also find out that Rock got pregnant, pregnant by Howard at 16, he thought she was 17 and that kind of just changes everything. And he uses this whole opportunity as leverage saying, you know, I want time with my son. I want, you know, to spend time with him because he knows his days are numbered as well. And he's willing to like, let it out that, you know, you fucked with a cop. So people are going to automatically label you a snitch kind of. So, you know, when you're in trouble, when, your mom calls you by your full government name. And this really turned ugly. And I think this is going to be a real turning point for Kanan's character as he finds out that, you know, Rock was the one that killed D-Wiz or got him killed. And finding all this stuff out about Marvin, he used to be a drug addict. That's why he's not in control of anything anymore. Pretty just really lays it in on Kanan. Kanan just storms out. Now, there's a scene of Lulu following Unique. Puts uh, He takes something from his car, and I, I'm wondering where th what's that all about. I don't know. That was kind of random to me. 
Rock confronts uh, Marvin about the whole Cannon situation, and it's just, she's furious. She wants nothing to do with him, and Marvin was afraid that Rock was going to kill her, but nah, like, he, she loves her brothers. She, you, you could tell, like, she would never probably kill them. Who knows? She might, but she just wants nothing to do with Marvin. Marvin's like, yo, I, uh, Kanan had a good idea, but it ended up not really working because people got killed. And I'm wondering, you know, how this is all going to play out. Let me know how you feel about this scene in the comments below. Going back over to Nicole's house, ju Jukebox is just there. She doesn't even care if she gets caught. The dad tries to warn her, like the mom called the cops. You got to go. She doesn't care. The mom even said, yo, we lied for you, saying like um, she got it somewhere else, which is kind of weird because of all the hateful things that she said to her. She probably just said it out of anger and just being upset, not really knowing her daughter. I don't know if they're ever going to be able to like um, fix that bridge, but I feel like that bridge is, uh, burnt. Deneva is pretty much, um, out of here because her mom died like a month ago. So she's in foster care. Kanan was going to go over there. And I think to tell Deneva that, you know, my mom was the one that got rid of D Wiz. So this is going to be interesting to see because both these characters have lost, people that they've loved or have feelings for so let me know how you guys feel about that in the comments below swinging things back to lulu because he's the like the main focus of this episode you know he's half owner of bulletproof records and now he got the girl but now you start to see her true intentions that she starts to take a lot of credit uh credit for the work that Lulu put in and I feel like their relationship is kind of is gonna probably probably go left we'll have to wait and see jukebox is able to get out of police custody and stuff like that because they got a call from the higher ups basically Howard said you know let her go she is able to get uh get loose going over to Marvin we get in, uh, reintroduced to Tony again because, you know, she hasn't been seen since earlier in the season. You know, Marvin needs to get some stress off. They kind of get into this argument. Now, the thing about Tony is she's working with some cops because she's got she's got the pressure on her to kind of um, snitch. And Symphony sees this, and I'm wondering how Symphony is going to ha kind of handle this information. Give it to Rock directly, or is he going to give it to Marvin directly? Because, man, th this this chick is trouble. She could really do some damage if, you know, if Marvin's not careful. Then we get to a scene where Rock is meeting up with the new plug. I'm drawing a blank on uh, Julianne's you know, uh, cousin's name. I'm drawing a blank on it, but he seems like he's 10 steps ahead of rock as well, because he starts to ask questions about the cop, um, detective Howard and what's her relationships with him. And she pretty much says like, look, I did a favor for your cousin. So you should know that I'm good. And I'm wondering if this character is in any way, shape, and form connected to Lobos. Let me know how you guys feel about that. And in the background, you have Unique getting ready to make a, make a message or send a message to Rock directly. Now, here's my favorite scene of this episode because I feel like right here is going to be the turning point for both Kanan and Jukebox. And... Here you think that Jukebox is going to go off on Kanan, but he do she doesn't even blame him. She blames the environment, just where they grew up at, how it just can snatch people that you love away from you uh, just as quick. So it's going to be interesting to see where they take these two characters going into season two, because we've been focusing a lot on like rock and just her organization the organization that they're most likely going to pretty much take over so the episode ends with lulu kind of just taking the night off he's the phone's blowing up rock's trying to get in contact but it's too late 
Unique's boys there light up the house, throw cocktails and stuff like that through the window. So he's get he gets trapped within the uh, within the house. Marvin gets there just in the nick of time to get him out of the building. Um, don't know if he's dead. I don't think that Lulu is dead. That would be a crazy death um, just to come out of nowhere. But I feel like Lulu has still a lot to do before he actually gets killed because you remember Kanan he also was like pretty much burnt alive but still survived so yeah man I think this is gonna bring Marvin and Lulu closer together especially Rock I think this is definitely going to be a declaration of war it's gonna get bloody and man I, I can't wait for these next two episodes let me ha know how you feel about this episode and the season so far is it picking up for you um, do you still feel the same way about it? Do you not like it as much? What is your favorite part of this episode? Where do you see these next two episodes going? Let me know in the comments below. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.